Uh, we started a, a company, and, and the business plan uh, basically uh, read something like this. We're going to take uh, technology that was available only in the most expensive workstations. We're going to try to make it reinvent the technology and make it inexpensive. Oh, how the times and the people, it seems, have changed. Now, of course, the person in that video was Jensen Wang, CEO of NVIDIA. But that was back in 2011, not today in 2023. And over a decade ago, it seems like Jensen Wang was a far more generous, but also far less rich person. A decade later in the modern day, Jensen is worth a lot more money than when he was giving that talk back at Stanford. But how much more money is he worth over a decade later? Well, Jensen, as of recent estimates, is valued at around 18 billion US dollars. Back in 2011, NVIDIA, the entire company, was not worth that much. And yeah, when you get more money, you have to do more extreme things over and over to increase that amount of money you have. And I don't think I'm speaking out of turn when I say that we can see this right now. Lovelace is priced extremely high. But here's where we start getting into the good news of this video. Despite much of the tech press declaring that high prices were here to stay recently, and despite honestly, even people like me and other tech tubers, at least to some degree, expecting this whole generation to pan out like Turing or Pascal, you know, Pascal, the first time Nvidia charged at least $700 for an around 300 millimeter squared 104 die, yeah. I expected that just like back in Pascal, NVIDIA would announce their higher prices and then gamers would just go out and buy it all up. But that's not what we're seeing. The 4080 is having laughably bad sales for how little volume has been shipped. And it's a similar story for the 4070 Ti where, at least based on what I've gathered from my sources, around 10% of the launch volume was even close to MSRP. And you can still get the thing close to MSRP. So that thing's selling like, really bad overall. And really no graphics card that has a bad price is safe. Not even an AMD graphics card like the 7900 XT with multiple AIBs already lowering prices below MSRP in the United States. No graphics card that is overpriced is safe in this market despite everyone thinking high prices were here to stay. The products that people perceive as better value or filling a better niche, they are selling out at MSRP, but if you overcharge for them, people don't want them. Not even the RTX 4090, which was one of the standout bullet points of information I accumulated for this video. Now, before I get into this first big data point, right, this video is summarizing how all different types of products have been selling over the past month in 2023. Before I get into the 4090 information, I wanna make one thing very clear. I am not saying the 4090 is selling badly. I am also not making some prediction that the 4090 will not keep selling at least respectively throughout the year. I am only suggesting that we are already seeing the limits of how high you can price this card and that no card is safe. Yes, you can charge more money than what flagships used to cost, but if you try to charge two arms and two legs, people are just going to reject it. So let me get into these quotes here about graphics card sales right now. My first source on the list is openly admitting that they work at Micro Center. And they say that the 4090 sales are noticeably declining already. Don't misunderstand this person. They're still selling out within a day or two when they arrive at a given location, but they're not gone in hours. And the models that are above $1,900 sometimes take multiple days or just sit on the shelves for weeks. People are not willing to pay $2,000 for a 4090 really that much anymore. That was a holiday shopping season thing that we saw there. Now, another source at a different retailer tells me that the 7900 XTX and the 4090 continue to sell well. However, the 7900 XTX is basically selling out because it's close to MSRP usually, and the 4090s, they tend to sell out within weeks of a restock, not within one day anymore. Ampere still sells like hotcakes though, especially when it's below MSRP. Another retailer in the US says that the 40 series basically just isn't even selling. This is a smaller retailer, but a multi-chain retailer nonetheless. And they say the big sellers are discount 3070, 3060 Ti, and 6600 XTs. And another retailer, now this time, this is a chain outside the United States, 
this person told me that they got around a dozen 4090s at one of their locations in January. Only one is sold. Only one. And it was to a workstation user. Everything selling in volume right now is to bargain last gen buyers. And finally, source number five here. This person is really what spurred me to get into reaching out to all my other retailer sources on this. This person felt odd telling me, but felt like he had to, that in 2023 so far, RDNA 2, which is of course heavily discounted right now across the board, and RDNA 3, which of course by that he means the XTX mostly, which is much cheaper than the 4090, are selling as fast as they can get them, unlike NVIDIA. Oh, and ARC sales are as dead as AXG now officially is. And you know, you really don't just have to take my word for it either. If you go online, you can see this panning out week after week in public view. No matter the retailer you go to, you can basically see that the 4090 week over week is slowly drifting towards MSRP, while the 4080 generally remains buyable somewhere if you look Look hard enough at MSRP and the 7900 XTX is selling like crazy. In fact, the much sought after MSI Supreme Liquid, the 4090 model that a lot of people regard as the best one to get, that one dropped today for a while to $1,800, basically at the launch price, which means that, well, Newegg wouldn't have done that unless they thought they needed to to sell it. So yeah, while some people are buying the 4090 for $2,000 here and there, you can see that these retailers don't think it's a good idea to always be marking up these products, and they're finding it to be a more and more of a bad idea as we move forward. And all this is happening, and I do want to dwell on this for a second here, because of pressure from AMD with the 7900 XTX. The 7900 XTX, everyone I'm talking to say that they basically haven't seen an AMD flagship sell like this for a while. They come in and then they leave the door and people are even willing to pay a bit over MSRP for the AIB models, whereas the 4080, that often isn't the case. They remain in stock. And I think this is important because as much as I think the 7900 XT is overpriced, it shows that if AMD were to fix the price on the 7900 XT or at a minimum move a ton more supply over to the XTX, that this would keep pressure on the 4070 Ti and the 4080 and that NVIDIA can't just be stubborn forever. And I do think that AMD will consider dropping the price on the 7900 XT within a few months. They just want to get rid of the rest of their Navi 21 stock first. It's very clear that through the middle to late last year, AMD first focused on liquidating the 6800 XT and then the 6900 XT. And then consistently, literally for the past five months, AMD has dropped the price of the 6950 XT month over month on their website. It started to 1000 then it went to 850 then 800 and now today it's already $700 and they're just seeing will people buy it here is this cheap enough versus the 7900 XT but they're also probably testing the waters of how cheap the 79 100 XT would have to be because it's a pretty similar level of performance in all honesty for it to sell like hotcakes and actually you can kind of already see them awkwardly doing this on a press release today where they weirdly show the 7900 XT is looking like it has way less value than the model above it and below it I think they're fine with that for another month because they want you to see that and go oh I should just get a $700 6950 XT you go buy it, or some people do, and then I think AMD considers, all right, we've gotten rid of Navi 21, now we can finally price the 7900 XT a little more reasonably so it won't be competing with this stuff we had to get rid of first. And let's be honest here, whether AMD officially drops the price on the 7900 XT or not, their AIBs are already getting close to pricing at $50 below MSRP. So even if it's not official, I think AIB's hands are going to be forced. And that's because, well, that's the main point of the first part of this video. No card is safe. Not AMD and not even the 4090 from NVIDIA. If there are better price products for the money this year, 2023, people are not going to let any company even NVIDIA, get away with murder. Again, that doesn't mean that I think the 4090 sales will just completely collapse necessarily. I think if the prices drop to MSRP or drift even a little below that, the 4090 as a flagship card will keep selling well through this year, but 
people are too stubborn to buy it at $2,000. People are seemingly too stubborn to buy the 4080 in high volume at $1,200, nor the 4070 Ti at $900. And I think it's pretty dang clear that if AMD wants to, they can go for market share if they're just a little aggressive with the rest of the cards they release in their lineup and if they fix the pricing on the 7900 XT. And you know what, guys? Eventually, Ampere stock is going to dry up. Eventually, RDNA 2 stock is going to dry up as well. And when that happens, NVIDIA is going to be forced to react to what AMD is doing with RDNA 3, or they will lose market share, and that is very good news for consumers. But you know, graphics cards aren't the only sets of information that I want to get to today. I also want to talk about some really interesting and in some ways depressing for a couple companies information that I've gathered about CPU sales and the overall health of the PC gaming market sales itself in January. But first, this piece of content is sponsored by Micro Center. Uh, look, maybe you might want to keep waiting to get a new graphics card. But if you're in the United States and you want to do a new build this year, I really do think that building at least the foundations of it with a new CPU, a motherboard, and RAM, is this a good time to start your build, even if you're waiting for graphics card prices to go down. And you know, there are links in the description that can save you even more money than, frankly, there are already outrageous prices on some products on Micro Center. Just clicking on these links in the description really helps Moore's Law is dead a lot. And you can save 25 or if you stack the offers, $50 on a new build at Micro Center. And they're already giving away free RAM. So that's like free RAM, the cheapest place to get a lot of these CPUs that I'm talking about today, and discounts on motherboards in addition to more stackable savings from the links in the description. And you know what? If you do want to complete your build and get a graphics card, they usually have the best prices on graphics cards anyway, so you might as well go there as well. Support Moore's Law is Dead by clicking on the links and shopping at Micro Center today. All right. I went through GPU sales. Let me get right into the CPU sales now because I really don't think enough people took me seriously when I rang the alarm bells really for the last six months that AMD's margins are above Intel's in retail and this is going to be a real problem for them. And in fact, before I even get into the disasters that I'm hearing from my sources in this quarter, Intel's last quarter earnings today confirmed the dire straits publicly and already. Last quarter, despite launching La Raptor Lake, Intel lost tons of revenue. I really wasn't kidding in this leak last year. Intel's margins, I said they would be in the gutter if they priced Raptor Lake remotely close to Alder Lake. And yeah, I mean... They are. Their margins are in the gutter and client. And Alchemist is being sold at cost and hemorrhaging the company tons of money. And, and Raptor Lake just isn't a margin champion. And the worst part of all of this is that and this is something I'm actually probably going to save to get into in another video uh, next month. It sounds to me like Intel all but stuffed the channels with Alder Lake last year. And that's partially something we can blame for OEMs being super reluctant to do new AMD laptop designs. When Alder Lake and Raptor Lake designs are pretty much compatible with their sockets and Intel stuffed the channels with Alder Lake before they raised prices to retailers last year, a lot of retailers bought up Alder Lake. And so you can see it in Intel's earnings. They have excess inventory. They have just like NVIDIA had an Ampere oversupply issue, it does seem like Intel has an Alder Lake oversupply issue. And, uh, but yeah, that's for another video. You can already see that what Intel reported in their earnings from last quarter is a disaster. But what I'm hearing from this quarter, it honestly might be even worse. The picture that is being painted for me when I summarize all the information I've gathered from multiple retailer contacts is that AMD is picking up steam while Intel is losing steam. Now, of course, the input varies a little bit. One thing that doesn't vary, as you can see from all of my sources, including the first one here, is that Zen 3 continues to sell incredibly well. But for him, Zen 4 was remaining a little light and Alder Lake was probably actually outselling it. But then Raptor Lake was selling so bad that combined rise in sales were beating Intel. Another source tells me, again, Zen 3 selling very well. But also at this chain, Zen 4 is selling as fast as they can stock them. And they can't sell any desktop chips easily anymore outside of 12th Gen Alder Lake. 
Source 3 told me something in a very colorful way. This person told me that while it's true that Zen 4 had a bad first month, its sales are actually picking up a lot already in January of this year. And that, yeah, AMD had pricing problems and they had to give away RAM, but they did. They gave away RAM, they've corrected the pricing permanently, and now Zen 4 is selling well right behind Zen 3, and Alder Lake is selling okay. Meanwhile, when I asked about Raptor Lake, the guy literally started laughing and said that Raptor Lake has just collapsed. Everyone keeps coming into the stores and saying, oh, is Raptor Lake going to get a price cut anytime soon? Look at these insane Zen 4 and Alder Lake deals. And they keep saying no, and Intel isn't indicating to them that they're ever going to drop the price soon. Fourth source tells me that Raptor Lake sales have, and this is their words, effectively come to a halt. On the other hand, Ryzen 5000 was apparently selling gangbusters and Ryzen 7000 was picking up steam. And you know, just like the GPU information I reported in the first half of this video, you can pretty much publicly see this panning out online with CPUs as well. If you go to amazon.com and look at their best sellers, indeed Zen 3 is just wiping out the market. And yeah, I mean, some Raptor Lake chips are selling well with some Alder Lake chips. Actually, that i9-13900K, I'm told that's like the only Raptor Lake model that has okay margins on it. But let's say we remove the last gen stuff most people are gravitating towards, Zen 3 and Alder Lake, with Zen 3 still, of course, way out selling Alder Lake. Well, if you are talking about Zen 4 versus Raptor Lake on Amazon.com, it's still Zen 4 is five out of the top 10 sellers on Amazon. And then you got to remember, this is kind of misleading, right? If you're in the United States, which I'm looking at the U.S. Amazon, well, then if you're close to a micro center, you'd be an idiot not to go there for the CPU when you can get insane deals like this, a $240, 7600 X that comes with 32 gigabytes of RAM for free. And then you can also get ma massive discounts on the motherboards. Now, Micro Center is doing that to get you in the door, but it doesn't change that they are doing that. And they're not doing that for Raptor Lake because they can't afford to. And then remember this, if a product starts to sell out on Amazon, the algorithm already automatically raises the price. This is why you saw the i9-13900K get to like $700 or more during the holiday season at one point, I believe. Well, if that happens with an AMD product on Amazon, AMD's selling it from their website. There's no reason to ever overpay for Zen 4 products. And so consider that then. Right now, the best-selling CPUs are mostly AMD. Now, those are Zen 3. But even if you're talking about next-gen chips, Raptor Lake versus Zen 4, AMD is still 5 out of the top 10. And that's not including the sales from AMD's website, nor from Micro Center, where I am being told Zen 4 is selling like crazy and Raptor Lake just isn't. Whether Intel fanboys like it or not, AMD fixed the pricing issue of Ryzen that is obvious. You can see it happening on public display now. And whether it's Ryzen versus Intel or Radeon versus NVIDIA, I think that there's going to be a rough wake-up call for companies that have insisted on failing to innovate on new technologies that can make their products cheaper because we're going into a recession and people are not just going out there now and buying whatever is the best no matter the cost. People want to get what they need for the best price and if you can't make it cheaper, someone else may be able to and you might lose market share. But just overall, I have to say, the market's looking like it's in pretty dire straits already this year, everybody. I don't expect any tech company to have fantastic earnings this year. It's just going to be a degree of who had the worst earnings. And I actually want to get into one final set of quotes here summarizing this point. So, yeah, source number one. Again, major retailer told me that it is really bad out there right now, that this person believes that some of the smaller chains and mom and pop stores could go out of business before summer. Now, that's not like Best Buy or Newegg, but it's like if you have one, two or three storefronts, they're already feeling the pain and people that kind of got bamboozled by Intel into buying up Alder Lake when they stuffed the channels, they're hurting really bad right now. Another source tells me that in general, you can see people who walk into stores, and this one was a major U.S. retailer, asking way more questions about price performance right now than they did last year. 
In 2022, this person told me the average person would come in and be like, what's the best gaming CPU I can buy? What's the best gaming GPU? They'd look for the best and then decide if it was too expensive. Now they're coming in with a price at the front of their mind first, saying, no, 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 this is my max budget. And then I also don't really want to spend this much unless I need to. Below this budget, what gives me the most frames per dollar, CPU or GPU, and which platform will last me the longest? I'm told from this person that it practically happened overnight on January 1st, that once the holidays were over, the belt tightening began. And then another source told me from another major retailer in the United States that they are seeing pre-built desktop component sales plummeting. Laptop sales, on the other hand, are seemingly remaining good, but only on models below $1,200, and they're seeing a major slowdown in NVIDIA laptop sales because most of them cost more than $1,200 right now, and they're really worried about what's going to happen if a bunch of companies try to sell Ada mobile laptops for like over three grand because they're having trouble selling them for over $1,200 right now. And so, yeah, I just don't see it. I don't see people endlessly buying up the 4090 at $2,000. I think the addressable market for people who are willing to spend that much is probably already mostly tapped out. And I think everyone else below that isn't going to be willing to spend, you know, over 800 bucks for most of these products as well. And I certainly don't believe that the average laptop purchaser who was probably paying one to $2,000 for the past five years is all of a sudden going to decide, yeah, I'll pay four grand for a 4090 laptop. I just really do think that a lot of products in the first half of this year are going to launch to pretty dang bad sales and force a price war by summer. All right, then that is the overall point I wanted to make. If you need to get something now, there's more deals than there ever has been in the past two years already. But if you don't need to buy now, you can wait because I do believe a lot of these products are going to be caught in price wars and go down in price over the next two quarters. Not all of them will go below MSRP. Like I think the 4090 may keep selling fine around there, but you shouldn't think that you're always going to have to spend way over MSRP. We're in a recession. People are more budget conscious and they're making those types of decisions now. Um, two things I want to address very quickly at the end of this video that I think I probably need to. Number one, there was a Tech Epiphany tweet about sales of the 4070 Ti at one retailer in Germany. I think this is important to remember that when I'm showing these quotes, this is about half of the people I talked to, you know, this is the quotes that I thought most relevantly summed up the situation globally, but it was globally. I was talking to about a dozen different people across retailers all over the world. This wasn't just like one retailer in one country. I was talking to people in multiple continents. And so if you see like one company in Germany bucking a trend, it's probably an outlier. You know, I think the better thing to conclude, and I don't think Tech Epiphany's data is wrong. You know, I haven't tried to vet it, but it doesn't seem like it could be impossible. I think the real conclusion to make there is that when you look at hundreds of GPUs sold by a major retailer, you just go, yeah, I don't know. Uh, if you check the stock levels of some of the cards at some micro centers, a lot of those micro centers have stocked more graphics cards at a single location than Tech Epiphany is saying has been sold from one major retailer in Germany. The conclusion you should take from looking at that is, wow, Germans aren't buying a lot of graphics cards and they seem to be entirely rejecting all cards above $1,000. That's the real conclusion there. And in fact, if you do take that as fact, Note that ARC is not selling at all, so you'd have to at least admit that. Which brings me to one more thing that I'm going to get through really quickly, and that's John Petty saying, or some people misquoting him as saying, that Intel has sold like a bunch of cards to consumers and is taking a market share from AMD. The fact of the matter is, people need to understand the difference between shipped and sold. No retailer I've talked to says ARC is selling. They don't know what to do. They basically got one, maybe two shipments of a handful of cards, and months later, no one's bought them. Shipping cards, putting them on shelves, is not the same as them going into people's gaming PCs. If it was, you would think on a Steam survey, which I certainly don't think is perfect, the A770 would show up like at all. But as far as we can tell, ARC has shipped 4 million cards last year, and nobody bought them. And yeah, ARC's probably going to be on a fire sale pretty soon. So I hope you're not getting... 
this dang thing for anything but collector purposes yet because it really is probably going to keep going down in price. Um, all right, then. Yeah. That's basically it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will have more videos coming out leaking details about AMD, NVIDIA, Intel, and other products very soon, including a look at what's really going on with laptop market share and design wins. I plan to do that at some point because I'm hearing some very curious things that add on to the stuff I already said in this video. But, you know, if you like this video, like it. Uh, make sure you ring the bell button. Tell your friends about us. Make sure you're subscribed to the Moore's Law is dead youtube channel so you show support and don't miss the upcoming videos and if you have the extra money consider supporting us on patreon we cannot do this without our patrons we love our sponsors but our patrons make this possible so that we don't have to always worry about if another paycheck is coming it keeps it consistent and there's tons of exclusive free content including a new die shrink with no ads only for patrons coming out tomorrow but otherwise no matter what thank you for watching <laughs>